there it goes. Okay, you're good. So good afternoon. I want to uh, call the meeting of the finance committee to order um, today being June 7 and it is uh, 3 p.m. and we have all members of the uh, finance committee present. So um, we'll go ahead and start our meeting. This was to be and is to be a joint meeting with the um, Amer African Heritage Reparations Assembly. You have to get the title exactly right. And um, I think that we do not have a quorum yet present from the assembly so that um, that will uh, we'll call that meeting to order or, or uh, it will be called to order if, uh, when we get to that time. So I, uh, in the meantime, need to, I think I've lost my agenda is the, the problem for today's meeting. I'll find uh, it. Do you have it to put up on the I'll get screen? it for you, yeah. Okay, and because uh, I'll go through the agenda quickly now and then we'll come back to it um, in a little bit later. And uh, so um, what I'm gonna do as, as uh, Lynn's uh, getting the agenda, I'll tell you a little bit about what the plan is for today's meeting and then uh, we will come back um, when we uh, say, a little, say some of this again uh, in a minute, but uh, we're gonna stop. The plan originally was to try and start as a combined meeting and then work on our other agenda items. But um, I think I'd like to pick up on one of the other agenda items if uh, we need to. And I'll probably, because we uh, told Guilford Mooring who was gonna be here for the Centennial water treatment plant um, and Dave Zomack, who's gonna be here for the North Common discussion, that they could come a little bit later so that uh, that was because we had this understanding about the order in which we were going to um, be starting things. And um, I'll explain a little bit about the process as we go along. But in any event, let me finish getting the meeting, our finance committee meeting called to order. Uh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 extended by chapter 22 of the acts of 2022, this meeting is being conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to attend the meeting can do so by Zoom, by telephone. Um, and uh, while no in-person attendance, uh, members of the public is being permitted, we are making every effort to uh, make uh, sure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by a technological means. And we will have public comment uh, during the meeting, which is an important part of what we do. But um, in any event, with that said, what I would like to do is to go ahead and um, ask each member of the finance committee uh, to um, confirm that we can hear, that they can hear me and we can hear them. Um, and then uh, um, when we uh, actually get to the, um, also calling the assembly to order, um, I'll then ask that we go around again to introduce ourselves to um, members of the assembly and we'll be asking them to do the same for us. So uh, Lynn, can you hear? And Yes, present. Uh, Bob? I'm here. Matt? Present, thank you. Yeah, uh, Bernie? Present. And Michelle? Here. Uh, Kathy? Yes, here. And Alicia? Here. Okay, so our committee is present uh, at this point. Um, uh, Michelle, is there anybody else that's joined that you know of? Uh, so or? Alexis just joined us. She was setting up for Amherst Media. Um, Irv sends his regrets. He had a dental emergency and is actually unable to speak. He said it was okay <laughs> to share that. <laughs> um, and I 
thought that Yvonne and uh, Dr. Shabazz were going to be joining us, but I don't see them yet. And I've texted both of them. So maybe it would be good to start with something else and then see if they arrive, if you're okay with that, Andy. And if, if Hala and Alexis are, and Jennifer are good with that as well. Okay. Um, yes. And um, so we'll save introductions uh, until uh, we see if you have a quorum and we will take, we will discuss reparations nonetheless, uh, but we want to give as much time for others from the assembly to join as we can. Does that make sense? Thank you, Andy. That's perfect. Okay. And um, so, Sean, is there an item that you would recommend that we take up first from the agenda? I would assume the capital improvement program, but you may have a different suggestion. No, I think that's a that's a great idea. That one, I think, is um, we're all here for that one. Okay, and um, I think that everybody is a. Um, See, I think that all the two members of the Finance Committee were at the forum last night, which turned out to be pretty much of a non-event on the forum side. Uh, there was not a lot of uh, comment that was offered regarding the Capital Improvement Plan. And uh, it has been submitted. We did talk about it at two meetings in the first week in May. And, uh, so at this point, I think uh, I, uh, it's really just a question at this point as to whether there are any matters from the um, proposed capital improvement program that people want to ask about or speak to. And uh, so why don't we uh, pause and see if there's members of the Finance Committee who have any uh, matters that they want to raise, Kathy. Um, it's, um, I, I don't want to be repetitive because I raised this last year also with a, a similar question, but one of the things you can see in the out years, um, starting actually the, in the coming year, is uh, at the beginning of the four capital projects with um, both the schematic design, fire station, DPW and Beast. So I just want to have our meeting notes say that that we still need to revisit this and um, the modeling that led to that capital plan still needs to be revisited. I'm fine with the, the capital plan as it is because it doesn't really affect FY23. FY23, um, we've already authorized the li library, which I guess is still uncertain when we were in JCPC, John, you, you said it's debt might start to show up in 23, but might not be till 2024. It sort of depends on the timeline for construction. Is that still correct? Yeah, no, I think everything you said is right. I, th I think, um, and I, I hope I mentioned this during the uh, presentation of the capital improvement program that the number specifically related to the four building projects might will change as we update that model. Um, obviously, since we, developed that model. We've seen rapid inflation construction costs and interest rates have started to go back up. Um, so I suspect as we update the model in the next year's capital improvement program, you'll see some significant changes to those numbers. Um, and then as it relates to the Jones Library, um, yeah, some of it's the timing of when that debt hits is, is related to the timing of when construction starts, but it's also related to the timing of when we borrow. Um, and we're, you know, we're working with our financial advisor to identify when the most ad advantageous time is. It's, we're sort of in this area of rising interest rates and a looming recession. And so trying to, trying to get the best rate for the town is what we're, what we're trying to do. Again, working with our financial advisor to, to do that. Yeah, so I, I, I just wanted to bring that up because FY, this will be a theme of the finance committee's reports. FY23 looks fine. If you go out a couple of years, we're in deficit. Um, although I know there's a lot of uncertainty in those out years. And we put in, this year, we put in this special pool of money because each piece of equipment we started to buy, we would say we wanted to buy it in September and by December, it was a different price. So we've got, we've got a pool of money for volatility um, that hopefully will get us through FY23. 
I mean, that's that that is what that is there for. So I I just I just want to underscore that similar to the operating budget um, right now, we're we're looking at a world that as we get into the later years, it's extremely tight budget. So the other thing that I'm thinking about is to follow up on what Kathy just said is that um, really have a couple we have new members of the finance committee and of course new members of the council too who have not had any presentation of the model whatsoever to understand even how it was um, structured to work and what the theory was behind it and i'm becoming more and more sensitive to it because uh, we received some questions at council level and i've been writing the report and if you've looked at draft one and I'm now working on draft two. Uh, I have pieces in there that refer back to the model and how are you how and why we built um, the, up the stabilization fund and why uh, we're anticipating now the use of the stabilization fund. I really think it might be time, even if the, we just make it clear that this is a sample, an example, but severely outdated and the numbers are irrelevant to at least to a presentation so that uh, there's an understanding of how the model developed over time and um, what kind of decision points get made within the process. When you say this is the time, Andy, do you mean right now, today? Not today. <laughs> okay. No I, mean I, I, no, I think um, I've talked to Paul about this. We're going to be working, um, I would say this month, we will be getting the, the tool updated. Um, as Kathy knows, the, our, our estimates of the town share for the school project keep changing pretty widely. Um, and so we're working with our designer and our OPM to really nail it down what the range is for um, the town share. And then we know what the library share is. And then with the DPW and the fire station, it ultimately comes down to, you know, what we can, what the town can afford. Um, so we will be working, I would say, in the next uh, couple of weeks and before the end of the month to get uh, a model updated. And then I can work with, um, with the town manager and the, and the chair of the council to figure out how we, you know, we present that updated model. Andy, I just, Andy, I just want to, I know, I see Lynn's hand is up. And um, I wasn't saying that needs to be done now, but really soon in July, because the assumption was the school building wouldn't draw it all on reserves. And we, depending on what we think we can, um, what the town share is of that startlingly high budget, we, we may need to be taking a look at that again. I, and I, I'm not saying with a conclusion, we just, but just that we may need to open the door to that discussion. Okay. Elokar, I see that you're here and just want to say hi. Uh, we started a little bit of finance committee while we're waiting for more members of the assembly to be here, but uh, we're going to switch to the joint meeting when uh, Michelle indicates it's time. Uh, Andy, do you, do you need me to call the meeting to order since I believe that we have a quorum at this point? Um, yes, probably. That if you have a quorum, you should do that. Okay, so calling to order the meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly at 3.16 p.m. And I can, we can make sure everyone can be heard when we come back to it, if that works. Okay, and we already have made a disclosure for the meeting regarding uh, the open meeting law requirements and the exceptions, so I don't think you need to repeat that. Um, Lynn? Your hand is up, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, let me just jump back to the model for a moment. At the point that Sean and Paul signal that we're ready, the question is whether this should be a presentation to the full council or to the finance committee to begin with. <laughs> the finance, uh, the full council um, has a meeting on the 27th of June and then again on the 18th of July. Um, the finance committee has not scheduled its meetings. I have a bias about this baby going to the full council, but 
excuse me, I don't know if that is reasonable. Um, and so that's my one question. And then frankly, I'm ready to make a motion on the capital improvement program. Um, okay, as far as uh, doing it to, I would say that uh, when, when Sean is ready, that we might consider um, a joint meeting at a council time and uh, make it an item that's at a set time so that finance committee members who are resident members who only want to attend that portion of the meeting, um, they know when it is. So Sean and Paul, the real issue is July 18th or because the next one is tentative if we even need to have it and that's August 1st. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'll talk with the town manager. I think July 18th yeah. is, is reasonable, but we'll just have to make, if, if there's any major pieces of information that would withhold, um, would stall us from updating it, we can let you know. Okay, great. So I'm done with that question. Um, I'm ready to move on to motions for capital improvement. Okay, uh, actually, um, don't we have orders um, yes, available for, so what we need to do is get the orders on the screen and then have motions to recommend orders um, specifically. So um, when Sean gets those available for us. Can you see my screen? Lynn's got it, Lynn's got it up I, there. I can see it. Okay. Okay. Go ahead then. Um, I move that we recommend to the town council approval of appropriation and transfer order FY 23-05A. Is there a second? I second, Shane seconds. Is motion on the floor that's been seconded any discussion? Uh, hearing none. Uh, no, oh, wait a minute, Lynn, your hand is still up. Is there further more, more that you want to say? At this Take point? it down. I, I just can't reach okay. it right now. Okay, that's all right. Um, so I just wanted to check. Uh, what we do, and I'm saying this for, the, for our guests at the meeting, that uh, since we have resident members of the committee who are non-voting members, and uh, which is by the charter, and we have five members who are members of the, uh, who are voting members because they're members of the council. The way that we proceed is alphabetically and uh, uh, the resident members indicate whether they um, are in support or um, not support of the motion that's on the floor and uh, members who are counselors vote. So that's what's gonna happen next. Um, so um, we'll start with uh, uh, Matt Hall Holloway. Uh, yes, yeah, support. Bernie Kubiak. Support. Uh, Michelle Miller. Yes. Gethy Chang. Yes. And I'm a yes. Uh, Alicia Walker. Yes. Lynn Griesmer. Yes. And Bob Hagner. Okay, so we have a motion that carries five to zero with all three resident members in support. And then there's a second one, which I'll put up on the screen. This is the dead authorization, correct? Yeah. There's actually going to be three altogether. Three dead authorization. Is this the correct one? This is the dead authorization, yep. Okay, so I move that we recommend to the town council that they approve appropriation and borrowing authorization order FY 23-06. Jane seconds. You said there were three, but there are only two borrowings listed A and B. Sorry, there, there's three orders. Um, the, the final order right. is, is okay. the stabilization. Yep. Got it. Okay, so uh, we have a motion on the floor uh, made by Lynn, Kathy seconded. Any discussion on the motion that's on the floor, Kathy? 
Um, yes, I would just like when when we do the report, Andy, Lynn read the short title of it. I would like the rest of the words to come in an order approving alteration. But so people know when they're reading it, that one is for the borrowing and one is for the cash. So it's just a request to add the rest of the sentence that Lynn didn't read. I, I actually would take that as a friendly amendment to both motions. OK, thank you. Okay, duly noted, and our minute taker also please um, take note of yeah, the uh, change. Yeah. Uh, so, um, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, we'll move down one on the list and start with uh, Bernie. I support the motion. Michelle? Yes. Kathy? Yes. I'm a yes. And Alicia? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Bob? Support. And Matt? Support. So it's five to zero with three members who resident members in support. So uh, Lynn, do you have the third order? Getting it. So this last order is specifically the stabilization fund and um, we put it with capital because it's really intended to support the initial debt payment for the um, for the Jones Library project. Okay, so I move that we recommended the town council approval of appropriation and transfer order FY 23-14B town of Amherst stabilization fund transfer to balance the FY 23 budget. Second, Jane. Okay, um, any questions um, or discussion? Andy, in, in the write-up, is this the one where when we bring it to the full council, there needs to be a two thirds vote to bring the money in? So we would just need to note that when you um, do the report back to the council? Yes, I, it says that it's on the order itself. In the order, yeah. Just an order appropriating that line. Yeah, I just, I just think it, it, that maybe everyone very carefully reads two thirds. I just, <laughs> I just, you know, I, I don't doubt that this will get a two third vote, but I just want people to understand that when we do that, it's a two thirds vote because we're bringing money out of the stabilization fund. It was, yes, and uh, I'm. Uh, Quite confident that if nobody else brings it up at the meeting, that Athena will make sure it gets brought up. We uh, also write the motions so that they have the required vote in them. The borrowing one also required two thirds. Thank you. If there's no further discussion, then uh, we'll go ahead and vote and then we can complete this item. And uh, then um, I can ask Michelle if she wants to proceed with the next agenda item being the um, discussion on reparations. So vote, uh, Michelle. Yes. Uh, Kathy. Yes. I'm a yes. Alicia. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Bob. Support. Matt. Support. And uh, Bernie. Support. So I think that again, we have five to zero with three members, resident members in support. Kathleen, do you, would you like to move on, um, have us move on to the next agenda item being the uh, discussion on the reparations? If I'm Kathleen, then. <laughs> the uh, I said, yes. didn't I say, I said, no, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, yes, that would be that would be great. I unfortunately I don't think Yvonne's going to be able to make it, and we know that Irv is not. So I think we're we have everyone here that is going to be here. Michelle, we do have a phone number in the audience. I don't know if I, I'll just tell the person to um, if you're a member of the AHRA to raise your hand, and I'm not just who knows how to raise your hand on a phone. Star nine, isn't it? Hit star nine on your phone if you are a member, and I'll bring you into the um, into the room. Thank you, Sean. That's a good call. Am 
I think you can go ahead. They haven't raised their hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, um, actually, I have a question for you, Michelle, and that is, um, uh, do you have a, um, a request as to, or any suggestion as to when you would like to have public comment offered? Um, that's, that's a really good question. I think let's, let's start our introductions and discussion and then maybe move to public comment after that. If that, does that work on your end? Yes, that's fine with me. Um, so why don't, um, I ask each of the members of the finance committee to just introduce themselves, indicate, uh, you know, just in a sentence or two, uh, what their, who they are, or as far as what the relationship is to the committee, and uh, uh, anything that they want to say in the introduction, and uh, then have you do the same for members of the assembly. Uh, so, I'll keep with the alphabetical, but just move down one. Uh, Kathy, why don't you go first? Just, Andy, I missed what we're doing. Just introduce yourself, uh, oh, what district you're in, okay. that we're kind of thing. Okay, I'm Kathy Shane, and I'm a counselor, District 1 counselor, and I'm a member of the Finance Committee. Okay, and I think that... Uh, People are probably getting to know that I'm Andy Steinberg and I'm the chair of the finance committee. I'm a counselor at large and uh, previous experience on the select board and before that on the old finance committee as it existed in our former form of government. Uh, Alicia? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Walker. I am an at-large counselor um, and a member of the Finance Committee. Lynn? Lynn Griesmer, District 2 Counselor, President of the Council and member of the Finance Committee. Bob? Um, <clears throat> Bob Hegner. I'm uh, a resident member of the, of the Finance Committee. I've been in Amherst for 22 years. Okay, uh, Matt. Hey there, everybody. Um, my name is Matt Holloway. I'm a resident member of the Finance Committee. Uh, fairly new, been on for about three or four months now. Um, only been in town for about three years. And I'm also co-chair of the Amherst Cultural Council. And Bernie. Hi, I'm Bernie Kubiak, a member of the old Finance Committee, now a resident member of the new Finance Committee. I live down here in South Amherst. So Michelle, you can say whatever you want in the introduction, but then take us in and uh, make sure that members of the assembly introduce themselves to the members of the finance committee. Excellent. And I also wanted to mention that Kathy is the chair of the school building committee. And so she didn't mention that. <laughs> um, and everyone knows, I think I'm Michelle Miller. I am a town counselor. Um, I am also the chair of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly. So sort of wearing two hats today. Um, I'm on the finance committee and I also chair the GOL committee. And we can just go, um, I'll start, I guess, in the order that I see folks on the screen. So Hala, do you wanna start and introduce yourself? Thank you, my name is Hala Lord. I'm the, on the African Heritage Reparations Assembly and I live in District 5. And I see you, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, Amilkar Shabazz. I've uh, been living in Amherst since 2007 and right off Bay Road and uh, I uh, um, am happy to be serving on the AHRA. And Alexis? <laughs> Hi, I'm Alexis. I live, I'm pretty sure, in District District 3. I feel a little bit embarrassed to say that, but I've been living in Amherst for 30 years. And Jennifer is also here. I, I'm not sure if, oh, there. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Moisten, I'm the Assistant Director to Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and the Staff Liaison for the AHRA. And I've lived in Amherst 40 plus years. 
the hope all of you know, um, our town manager and our finance director. And uh, so what we want to do is um, at least today start with a discussion in which we uh, the assembly under Michelle's leadership is going to explain what it is that um, the assembly is asking the finance committee and ultimately the council through the finance committee to consider. Um, we're going to be able to have time for questions from members of the finance committee about the request. Uh, questions in, questions from members of the assembly about what um, they uh, want to know about the town's finances and how the proposal um, last year was structured and what is envisioned or whatever is there because this is and the, the the goal of this meeting is to make sure that we get to know each other that we understand what the request is we understand what the issues are that uh, and questions are that um, the members of the committee and members of the assembly have about the decision in the process. Um, we are limited in time because um, Sean and Paul have another meeting that is coming up, which is the um, Library Building Committee, of which they're both members. And that's uh, a really important committee meeting. So we are time limited today, and we do have several other agenda items that the Finance Committee has to deal with today. But we wanted to get as far as we can today. If it gets to the, there's a, build, a consensus amongst the Finance Committee and some ability to conclude the discussion, we would do so. If not, we want to make substantial progress. So that was uh, my introductory piece. And I think that Michelle's introductory piece is going to be to start uh, by explaining a little bit about the request and take it from there. So Michelle. Thank you, Andy. And thank you um, for this opportunity for us to be together and have this discussion. Um, really appreciate it and appreciate the time that you may have taken to read the memos that I've put out. Um, I put one out a couple of weeks ago and then one very late in the day today. So you may not have had a chance to read it. Um, but essentially, we are here because our charge, the AHRA and uh, I just wanted to make this little note that it's the African Heritage Reparation Assembly. There's no S on it. <laughs> um, so um, we are charged with identifying an ongoing funding stream. And um, it is outlined in my memo that last year, um, about $210,000 was moved um, from free cash into the stabilization fund to basically to seed our um, to seed the fund as we were beginning our work, and that was um, modeled off of the cannabis tax revenue um, that was expected. Or it, I, you know, I, I don't know if I got this right, Sean, when I put it into the memo. I hope that I did, but I, I think it was modeled off the FY twenty one actual ca cannabis tax revenue. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. I think that's right. Okay, great. And so our request is actually twofold. Um, we recognize that the budget has already been set for FY23. And so we're asking that for FY23, similar to last year, um, free cash would be moved into the account in the fall when it becomes available, um, similar to the model that was used last year uh, off of the cannabis tax revenue. So that's one request. Um, but for FY24 and going forward from there, we're asking that the town council designate the cannabis tax revenue for reparations. Um, and, you know, it's understandable. I tried to I tried to address several of the concerns that I heard um, in the council meeting when this was originally presented. Um, but again, I just want to remind us that our number one goal um, was to identify an ongoing funding source. 
And after very careful consideration and research, um, we determined that the cannabis tax revenue is the best source of revenue for reparations. And in order for us to move forward with our work and to develop a plan um, and to be able to consult with members of the Black community um, and engage um, the community as a whole, having a sense that there is a stable, ongoing revenue stream that is going to be developing this fund um, is really important. And so given that our timeline expires in June 2023, uh, and given the way that the budget cycle works, we are bringing forward this request now. Um, the cannabis tax revenue is uh, not something that has been really discussed, as I understand it, in terms of where it should go. Um, and I think that in the memo and in our last council meeting, we've made the case for why we um, believe that reparations is the right place for it. So I do want to turn it over to any of the HRA members who may want to add to what I've uh, just framed there, and then, of course, open it up for further discussion. So um, if Hala or Dr. Shabazz or Alexis, uh, Jennifer, anyone would like to add to what I've said, please raise your hand and... Yes, Alexis. I want to keep this very brief, unlike I normally do. Um, so I guess I just wanted to say that um, I would like to encourage you all to avoid the temptation of pitting marginalized groups all who are all deserving of reparative justice against each other. Um, I, I strongly believe that race exclusive um, discrimination deserve, deserves race exclusive reparative programs. And um, your recommendation is a step towards tangible change that um, our African heritage a community can be very encouraged by. So thank you for your consideration. Oh, anyone else on the assembly? Uh, yes, Dr. Shabazz, I see your hand. Thank you. I'll also endeavor to keep this brief. Um, Denver, Colorado led the way in terms of uh, municipalities in the United States of America in beginning to look at, in terms of collecting uh, revenues from uh, cannabis uh, uh, sales. And uh, if we look at what they've done, they really have taken a look at that revenue stream and try to uh, use uh, at least part of those funds in ways that um, uh, attempt to uh, rectify or repair harms that were done, uh, particularly when marijuana was illegal. But, uh, but even going beyond that, in, in terms of other kinds of social reparative uh, measures beyond uh, fixing potholes and the, all the other things that come out of our general fund that we do in that. And, and I think it's something for us to look at here. But uh, in terms of this particular uh, pool of revenues, how to uh, particularly try to use it in ways that um, encourage our young people, encourage people to, to uh, avoid marijuana use, uh, encourage our people to have other things to do than to, uh, than to go and smoke marijuana. Um, so there are a lot of different things we can think about, both for the community impact fees, as well as for the revenues collected from the taxes that ought to be looked at in a reparative way. But I want to say one other thing in terms of where we're at in terms of the assembly, or I'll speak specifically for myself. It's really hard to begin to go to the African heritage community in Amherst and start a real consultative process about repair and about the, the, confronting the harms that our community has undergone and what kinds of things could happen here in Amherst when we have no idea of any sort of budget for this other than the 200 K or 200,000 or so that's in the current stabilization fund. And so right now trying to go out there, I, I, we really have an issue in terms of like managing the expectations because if that's it, if that's all this council thinks it can do, then we need to know that. And then we're going into the community and say, look, we got 200 K, what can we do? But if we're thinking of something larger, something more robust, 
something tied to perhaps this cannabis tax revenue from which we can plan and we can develop a real plan that goes beyond just 200K to look at years out the kinds of things that can be done, then that's a totally different message that we can go into the African-American uh, uh, Black community and begin to consult with them about the harms and about the repair. So it's very important, I think, that this uh, council, uh, that this finance committee recommend to the council to really confront this now, giving us a clear sense of what kinds of revenue uh, uh, possibilities we have to look at in terms of a reparative justice plan. Because otherwise, it's, it's, it, it's very difficult for, for me to imagine going into the African heritage community to really talk about uh, a, 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 a plan for, our, for addressing the harms that have been experienced in our community without any sense of what kinds of, 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 of revenue we're, we're committing, we're reserving to put behind this work. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Shabazz. Yeah. So I, yeah, and I too want to thank both of um, our recent speakers because I think that it has helped to frame the discussion and uh, increase the understanding. And I don't think that anybody is going to be surprised that finance committee's concern always is the fact that our resources are limited and that um, we've got a lot of pressures on um, the town as far as what the expectations are. Um, and we've actually increased the pressure on ourselves um, in the last year by creating two new programs that hadn't existed before and trying to fund those programs at the same time that we're uh, trying to maintain what we're doing now. Obviously, I'm referring to Crest and DEI. Uh, but uh, let me ask what, uh, Sonia for one piece of information, if it's available. If not, you obviously just tell us. And that is, uh, do you have an estimate at this point yet for the years to what we might have in the way of uh, cannabis revenue from excise tax, that portion of it? I do not, not at the moment. Um, it did go down quite a bit because one of the estab establishments closed down. So I don't have that now, but the timing for, an, I'm just trying to understand what the process is here that everyone's trying to get because we can't do anything with free cash until it's recertified. And that isn't gonna happen until October. And it's too late to do it for this year's free cash because you have to have a public forum for this appropriation and it has to go through that whole process. I believe, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm so little. Um, I don't believe we had a public forum when this was decided last year, but um, it's an appropriation. I think we did um, do a public forum. It was combined with multiple um, right. others because we did a, we did a road allocation and sidewalks. Um, yes. This transfer, so I think it was all part of one. But right. because it's an appropriation, um, we think you you still have to do the public forum the way we do for other appropriations. So that part of it couldn't happen until after free cash is recertified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody who needs an explanation of what we mean in the terms of free cash certification and, and the history of how we've transferred funds from free cash to stabilization funds in, in general, because that is sort of a core understanding of why, how, how the timetable works. I don't wanna repeat information that others, that, that's already available, but if there's a request for that answer, then either Sean or I will provide it. Andy, can I just follow up on that real quick? Yes. Um, we'll double check on the hearing. I guess I do want to double check on that. Um, Sonia, just whether we've done uh, hearings in past years when we just transfer to the regular stabilization fund, because um, it's, it's similar to that. Um, 
and I just want to clarify. So this, uh, the request is to do this in the fall, right? The request is to do this in the fall when um, free cash is certified. Yes, there's no question on that. We're we're uh, we're just looking to get some indication from the finance committee, or really from the town council, um, that that will that that will be the decision um, when the money becomes available in the fall. Andy, I see Paul's hands up. But yeah, Paul. <laughs> yeah. So I so I just want to be clear what we're asking for. So, as are we looking at two different things? One is an action in the fall. And then from that point forward, saying every year the cannabis excise tax is going to be put into the stabilization fund. And I guess a question to Sonia is, when do we, this is a money that's collected by the state. When do we know what that number is? Like what time of year would we learn what that number is that we collected in the prior fiscal year? I think a safe timeline would be um, the end of July. <clears throat> so end of July every year, we'll know what was what cannabis tax was put into what has been given to the town through the state, right? Yes. And if 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 the council says we want to dedicate those funds to reparations, how would you see that working? I think that if there's a vote to dedicate those funds to reparation, then they would just automatically get. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, because I just read this once, and but I think it just gets um, automatically dedicated to the stabilization fund. Yeah, let me just clarify. So I think there's, I think we're combining two things. So okay. that I think, and Michelle and anybody else on the uh, AHRA, correct me if I'm wrong. So what you want to do is transfer an amount equivalent to what we receive in FY22 into the into the stabilization fund. So that would, not a dedication, but transferring it literally into that fund. Um, and that's the number again, we'll know at the end of July and then and the free cash will be certified sometime in October. So that's when that would happen. Then there would be a separate action to dedicate future revenues, um, future cannabis revenues uh, to go into the stabilization fund beginning with FY24's cannabis revenues because FY23 is part of this budget. Um, so that vote theoretically, um, you know, you'd want to, you'd want to, that to also be in the fall. So when we do our budget planning and our budget process, um, you know, before we go and forecast revenues that are going to support the overall budget, we'd want to know if that debt, that revenue was going to be dedicated to something else so that we wouldn't include it in our budget planning. So I think both of these things would, would have to be voted in the fall if we wanted to do it in the most um, sort of planned out way. So, so it's my understanding there's two actions. One is to take action to put money into the stabilization fund in the fall and we'll know exactly what that number is if it's if we're going to tie it continue to tie it to can cannabis revenue and the second is to establish a policy of the council to from this day forward dedicate those cannabis funds to go into us into the reparations and by this day forward meaning july 1st 2023 yes yes but the, but the, the council would need to do that in the fall of 2022 so right. that we know going forward when we prepare our budget that that's what the council wants to do. So there's two, two separate actions the council would be looking at doing. That's right, that's, that, that is the request. And um, whether it's voted now or voted in the fall, I'm not sure if it matters from your perspective. From our perspective, it does matter in the sense that we would like to have that sense of security that that you know or at least have some knowing about where we're headed um and and so we would prefer and what we're requesting is that this gets back to the council sooner than later to be voted upon and part of it is we've built a lot of momentum um, we've worked really hard putting these memos together getting public to come out and to speak to this um, there are other um, demands on the budget, and we understand that. And for us, our objective is to secure this stream of revenue and to secure it now. Um, and so that is what we're requesting. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not open to having further communication, um, answering questions. I'd be happy to go through some of the um, items that are here in the memo that I picked up from our last meeting. Um, if folks want me to go through those, or perhaps they're a good um, place to start, I, I would like 
to hear from members of the Finance Committee, recognizing that this is a challenging conversation for us to be having, um, and we're all coming at it from different perspectives. Um, but I would like to get the sense while we're here of um, the committee so we know what we need to do, how far off we are. As Andy said, if we have some consensus today, we may be able to move this forward um, sooner. Um, and of course, uh, you know, the recommendation from here is a recommendation and ultimately the council will have to decide on these things. So I'm curious um, if there are members of the committee that would be willing to speak to this at this point. Yeah, I see uh, three hands up from the committee, so I recognize them in order and say if any questions uh, that I have until after we get other questions out. Or my brilliant committee may ask all the questions. I don't need to ask anything, but start with Bernie. Uh, thanks, Andy, and uh, uh, thanks to uh, Michelle for doing a considerable amount of research and writing on this. Um, I'm not going to be able to add much new to what's already been said, but I would offer my support for pegging uh, reparation funding to the to the the, the cannabis excise tax. Uh, if we're going to, if the town's serious about going forward with, with reparation, um, then it makes sense to um, it, to, to provide a, a a a predictable source of revenue to provide some security. Again, a peg to hang that promise on, and um, it'll also, I think, take us out of the uh, the annual discussion of, of how much and from where, uh, which can you know can pull the the focus away from what should be happening in terms of the the purpose of, of the project, the reparation project. So I just um, you know again, I can't add anything new. It's all been said, but I can add my support. So, Kathy? Um, I, too, thank you for um, amazingly and wonderfully clear memos, M Michelle, and then the explanation of what the ask is. Um, I'm uncomfortable about committing now because I would like, um, I saw in the charge, to have a plan for how we might be spending this. And, and even if it's conceptual, that we know we can spend it in specific legal ways. I don't need to know, you know, X dollars for this and Y dollars for that in terms of an allocation. Because I think um, watching you, you've pointed out Illinois, we have a couple pioneers out there, but along the way there have been challenges. So I would like to have a better sense of how we might be spending it. And I very much appreciate Dr. Shabazz saying, you know, with uh, $210,000 seed money, you have something to begin with. There's something quite real here. And I'm not at all saying that might be the end of it, but you can do fundraising around it. You can get people excited that Amherst has put itself on the map. But I've been watching. I'm really worried about the fiscal situation of the town. Um, and yes, the cannabis tax in the current budget is only $150,000 penciled in, but that only is is being used and may really be used. Uh, FY23 looks pretty good. FY24 looks shaky, and FY25 looks really bad. Um, as we as we look just in terms of keeping our schools going, keeping the Crest program, the four firefighters are funded by ARPA money right now. Um, there's a hole when we go out a couple of years. So I'd like to be at a more confident level. Um, and so I'm thinking pushing this off for a year um, or six months or eight months where we had kind of a concrete plan. We know for sure we can spend the money in these legal ways. And I know we went to the state legislature to try to get special dispensation for this um, before I as a finance committee member commit to money. And I do understand the two asks that, that in the fall, it could be an ask out of free cash. And I feel kind of the same way about free cash. It's free before we put it into the stabilization fund. But if we, um, as the chair of the school committee, I don't know how many of you have been paying attention to what that price tag is coming in at. 
um, it's going to be a huge ask um, the residents of the town. And to the extent there's money in the stabilization fund to soften it. I mean, we haven't talked about touching it for the school yet. Um, the, the taxpayers, the town, I think need to rest assured that we're both on moral high ground of things we really feel strongly about, but we're also supporting the services that people care deeply about. So I'm at a discomfort level of making a decision now, um, meaning the timing doesn't work well for me. Um, and so I know it's a chicken and egg. You, um, you sort of laid out, it's hard to say what you might spend it on till you know how much money you've got. But many of us have thought of what's our house and what, we, what would we want in the house? We at least lay out the house and then we figure out whether we can afford that house or not. But I, I think more elements and you were due to have one of the tasks or the charges was a specific plan um, about which things both you might want to spend it on and which things we can legally spend it on. So I have both, I have those two questions and I'll stop at there. Um, so that's both a, a concern and a financial point of view on the timing of the ask. Thank you, Kathy. If I could, Andy, just quickly um, clarify that I did outline in the latest memo some possible uses for the money. Um, and these are, um, places that we've identified um, as areas that would be uh, benefits. And some of them include, and I just want to highlight this, the possibility of picking up on some of the recommendations from the community safety working group, um, like the BIPOC Cultural Center and the Youth Empowerment Center, um, and looking at those as community benefits. So just thinking about this in the way of a savings account and ways that um, we may, of course, any of this and all of this will be reinvested back into the community uh, one way or another. So I, I do wanna point point that out um, for you to look at that. Okay, thank you. I want just, just uh, for the sake of our uh, HRA members who have not been at finance committee meetings before, the way we work when we have joint meetings that involve others besides the finance committee present is everybody just raises their hand if they have something to say. And I recognize hands in order in which they are raised so that uh, if you, want to engage in the conversation just please raise your hand and uh, uh, I will it will be duly noted and uh, I'll proceed from there Matt thanks Andy um, thank you Michelle and AHRA uh, members really this has been a, a tremendous amount of work and um, I think as Michelle has said we you know the eyes of the country are kind of on us this is you know we, we truly are doing something exciting here um, Andy, I had a clarifying question before I kind of make my, like I had a short, some short thoughts, but um, what, what possible actions might finance take as a result of today's discussion, if, if any? And I would ask that of you or of, of anybody who wants to help me understand that. What's the charge for the finance committee here? Uh, but Paul was sort of getting at that question uh, a few minutes ago and I would think that the and uh, Sean can back this up, but um, one is to make a commitment now, which we would not normally do about a uh, transfer from free cash, or at least to say that we will transfer, make a transfer in the amount um, or recommend a transfer at the appropriate time in the amount of uh, the estimated FY22 revenue from cannabis or is it up by 23 but anyway sean will get yeah i think around. i think the two possible actions would be to recommend the transfer you could recommend now the transfer to occur in the fall if you chose to we don't have orders drafted for those yet so um so we don't have orders ready to share but they're you know they're sort of the same as they would be last year um, and then the other action that the finance committee could recommend would be again in the fall um, to take some action to dedicate the, the cannabis revenues for FY, beginning in FY24 to the stabilization fund. And that'll be a recommendation to the council for, I'm sorry, just as a, 
new member trying to get processed straight. So that would be a recommendation to the town to the council for a vote. Yeah, and then for the council, they would both be. I'm pretty sure they would both be required two third uh, two thirds votes. Um, both for the transfer into the stabilization fund. And then I believe the dedication of a revenue to a stabilization fund is also a two thirds vote. Thank you. And I apologize if that was redundant. It's just, it's been a lot to kind of track, uh, track the possibilities here. Uh, I think this is a, you know, a really exciting time and a, and a really exciting moment. Um, you know, certainly I, I echo Ka uh, Kathy's concerns about uh, overall funding, you know, with inflation and the major capital projects and um, operating budgets. Uh, being what they are and you know positions running on on ARPA so so I do recognize those things at the same time um, you know looking at the overall cannabis initiative statewide um, looking at some of the required uses that the state um, has established for its regulation fund you know just trying to get my head around sort of what the spirit and intent behind this law is um, you know and as Michelle alluded to in her memo uh, there are, there are public health questions, I think, that are associated with, um, you know, uh, legalization of, of cannabis that, that will require funds at some point to address, particularly, um, you know, for, for youth, but, but just across the board. So I, I think being mindful of, you know, we are so early in the impact of introducing this new uh, factor into our community that, that I would want to be mindful of, of some of those other needs that may arise, you know, and that these revenue may uh, be dedicated to. But, you know, I, I do, I did take a lot of um, guidance, I guess, from, from looking at the, the MGL and, you know, granted the state takes 16% or so of, of, you know, revenue versus our, our 3%, but, but, you know, I mean, the, the MGL does call for, you know, programming for restorative justice, jail diversion, workforce development. Um, you know, there is, there is a, a clear intent behind the state law to use some of these revenues to help redress some of the wrongs for um, groups who are disproportionately affected by, uh, you know, criminalization of cannabis. So I, I, I do think that we can take the lead there. Um, and, you know, I'm, the, the mechanics of it, I think are beyond me right now. I don't really have a clear picture of, of what we should specifically do in terms of a funding level. Um, but I, but I, I would support uh, some degree of, of earmarking of, of these funds for the reparations assembly just or the reparations project simply because you know that does seem to be one of you know one of several key um, areas of, of spending in the in the state uh, in the state program. I guess one thing that I just want to make sure that everybody recognizes is that there are actually two revenue streams that come in from the sale of marijuana. Uh, one is impact fees, and the other is excise tax, the share of the excise tax, and uh, there are different rules about, uh, there's restrictions on use of impact fees, but excise tax is excise tax and uh, communities are free to use excise tax as revenue in any shape that they feel appropriate. Uh, so I just want to make sure that that's understood. And um, Sonia, did you, you uh, we usually go to staff to, if the staff, because uh, they may have something in information for us to consider. Sonia? Yeah, I was just a little confused by Sean, what, what you said about the, uh, the free cash appropriation to commit to that. We don't have an order, but we wouldn't put an order through until the fall. So I just, maybe I'm too much of an accountant. No, I'm saying we, we don't have an order. Box. Yeah, we don't have an order yet, is what I said. Yeah, but I, so we're not recommending here. Well, today. I think that, so the decision today and for the finance committee, which is a little bit different than the way the process usually works, is when the finance committee makes a recommendation, you typically have an order in front of you to review and to consider. If the finance committee was going to make that recommendation today, all I'm saying is that you don't have an order to review because we don't we don't have one yet. Because norm, normally it would, would have be to revisit in it in the fall and re-recommend it though for the because there is no source right now. Right, I think so. I think Sonia's right. I think Sonia's saying that, that because we don't actually have free cash certified, we can't prepare an order. Um, Putting the cart before the horse here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think it's, yeah, it's an important distinction to make. So we're asking for the commitment, not 
for, you know, actual recommendation, okay. actual recommendation. And that's exactly what we did last year is the commitment actually happened, I think on June 5th um, and, or whatever it was in my, my memo there. Um, and then the actual order wasn't voted until the fall. So that's both are true. <laughs> the uh, just to uh, clarify one thing, uh, I believe that transfers into stabilization funds require a majority vote and transfers out under current law require two thirds vote. Uh, yeah, no, you might, I might have flipped those. I, if I said two thirds to, to go in, but I'll double check it. Yeah, um, Alicia. Um, yeah, thank you. At first, I just wanted to recognize and thank the AHRA for their uh, the incredible amount of work that they have done and for their dedication and commitment to this committee, um, which is very important, but also very challenging work. Um, so thank you all for taking this on. Um, and I want to state that I am in complete support of taking some type of action towards this and today. Um, some of the things that I'm thinking about is that while we would like for there to be a permanent plan or a very like um, detailed plan as to how the committee thinks that we should use reparation funds, that that's extremely difficult to do if there's no realistic sort of, you can't really fathom your realistic fund and your pool and what you have access to. And so that limits the possibilities to narrow down and specify that at all. And so I think that the general list of things that might happen or might be able to happen is, I think that is sufficient. Um, and I wouldn't expect them to be able to come up with more if like there's a big difference between giving somebody $210 thousand dollars one time and having them know that that is going to be replenished every single year those are two incredibly different things and might result into incredibly different outcomes in terms of what can be offered to the community um, and I know that as a town um, our budgets and finances are really tight and we're working on a lot of really important projects uh, but I don't believe that we have any current standing commitments to use these funds for any of those projects um, nor do I think we necessarily should. Um, I think that the cannabis tax revenue has no better, there's, there's no better reason or source for it to be used for. Like this is exactly the kind of programming, the kinds of restorative justice that those funds should be going to. Um, and so I don't understand the difference between committing now and committing later in the year. I don't understand what things we think would change between now um, and July in terms of our budget and our finances. I think we have a, a pretty clear picture as to what we think or expect will happen, although we know that there will be some variation. And I don't think that, that those things will change depending on the commitment that we make to the AHRA and to establishing and identifying that fund, which we created this committee to do. And so I think delaying and prolonging them also doesn't make sense. Um, and so I would support figuring out some type of commitment today that we could make towards identifying um, an ongoing revenue stream for AHRA from the cannabis revenue funds um, and also airmarking or co a commitment to airmarking and looking at these funds when it does come to the time. Um, for the free cash for this committee as well. Matt, your hand is still up. Did I uh, not get back to you? Or I don't know if you had anything else to say. Okay. Um, Lynn's hand is up. Yeah, Lynn, um, since you raised your hand, I was going to kind of, but go ahead, Lynn. Please go ahead. No, the only thing that I was going to uh, make sure that it's understood because it was kind of, I think there's a little bit of confusion in the time. And uh, I, just to remind everyone, just and if everybody knows what I'm gonna report, I'll try and be brief and I apologize. But uh, with the way that um, what happens is, is that at the, end, at the end of the year, at the end of the fiscal year, um, we closed the books. And of course, that's June 30th. 
and make a preliminary determination of the um, whether there is free cash left at the end of the year. Um, and our policy is, is that there's a cap on the amount of free cash that we have and we move excess free cash to stabilization. Uh, there's always been some level of excess free cash and uh, that enables us to do that. Um, and uh, we do that after free cash is certified by the Department of Revenue because they have to make go over our books and approve what um, Sonia has been working on and uh, for the entire year, make adjustments to it. And then they certify an amount of free cash, which then gives us the ability to make the transfer. And uh, we transfer to stabilization fund um, of any amount that's in excess of the balance that's in town financial policies of what's the maximum amount of free cash we uh, feel appropriate to hold as free cash. So that's how the process occurs every year. What happened last year, uh, which was our first year um, where we were operating with the second stabilization fund, because we have a general stabilization fund, which we've been intentionally building up in order to um, fund the capital projects, including the library and school building, uh, elementary school. Uh, but we established this um, second stabilization fund for uh, reparation. And uh, that transfer, what well, we did at about this time or around uh, July 1, I can't, um, Michelle gave us the exact date, but it doesn't matter the exact date. But at that point, um, the recommendation was made from the Finance Committee to the Council, and the Council voted that it had the intention of making a transfer from free cash to, to, to the uh, reparation stabilization fund in the approximate amount of the prior year's revenue from um, excise tax for cannabis sales. And so that intention was what was voted. And then the actual transfer was voted in the fall. And so uh, that was the process last year. And I think that we were kind of working through um, similar. So um, Sonia, what did I get wrong? No, you got it right. I'm just going to throw a little monkey wrench into the whole thing here. Is our financial policy state that anything over 5% of in free cash would get transferred to stabilization funds. So when would this kick in? Because um, we're going to be transferring money to the stabilization fund. So what if we don't reach that 5% in free cash? Do you know what I'm saying? So we get our, because our policy states 5%. So we try to keep 5% of free cash at all times and everything else goes into the stabilization funds. So I don't know, that's just one thing to consider. For, for us accountants that see it in black and white, what do we move here and what do we move here? So. Sonia, are you talking about the dedication of the revenues? Or we're talking about transferring from free cash I guess that there's, that there's in the fall the one. yeah so anything over five percent in some years that was a, a very small amount so i know the last few years has been really high but that's not the norm so i just want everybody to keep that in mind yeah i mean we do have that actually additional concern is which is what happens this year if because of all of the inflation that we have been sitting in our costs for energy and food and other things that have been most particularly affected by inflation, we know that, for example, uh, uh, the departments that run vehicles have been paying higher costs for fuel for vehicles. Um, so the, uh, we may end up the, the year with less free cash uh, than we have in prior years. And so the what if question actually is a, uh, 
relevant additional question, Sean, and then I'm going to go back to the to the committee members. Yeah, I mean, I think one reason, I mean, the committee could certainly signal a commitment now if they wanted to. I think one reason to um, reserve sort of a final decision to the fall um, is because I think you want to see the revenue projections going forward. Um, there's a long time between now and the fall and we don't know what's going to happen to the economy and all sorts of things along those lines. Um, the way things are headed doesn't doesn't always sound great when we read the news. Um, I think that we have enough information now that we can look at it both ways when we do our revenue projections in the fall um, that might help inform the committee um, and inform their decision. Okay, Lynn. Andy, can I just jump in and remind AHRA members that if they'd like to speak at any point, um, as Andy said, please raise your hand and you'll be put in the queue. Okay, the other thing that I need to make clear is, is that um, we do need to um, hear from, to meet with the uh, superintendent of public works regarding a very important decision that needs to be recommended to the council regarding funding for the centennial uh, water treatment plant and the assurance that we have uh, adequate drinking water into the future. And um, we also have uh, a presentation that we need to hear from the assistant town manager after that regarding the North Common project uh, and the funding for the North Common project. So that's why we do need to cap the discussion today, whether or not we reach a conclusion. Lynn? So um, I just wanna look at a couple things, okay? The first request is around free cash. And I personally have no problem with looking at it once it's certified. Uh, and I wanna thank Sonia for bringing up our own fiscal policy, which is the one about the 5%. So that, but we won't know that question. We won't know the answer to that question until uh, October, okay? We also won't know the answer to the question with regard to expected revenues, but let me just stay on the free cash for a moment. Um, if we find out in the fall that above 5%, there is amount equal to what the uh, revenues would are that we would find out in July uh, for cannabis, then I think that is a very appropriate and considered thing to do at that time. If we find out that our free cash is left less than 5%, then we have a bigger problem in that we now haven't followed our own fiscal policy. And that's a problem for me, okay? The second piece, and I wanna just talk to the issue of, um, and, and believe me, I, I've raised money for all kinds of things over the years. I understand the chicken and the egg problem. You wanna have money so that you can plan for it. And you wanna be able to say to people, we have money, and therefore these plans are real, okay? Um, I am very reluctant to ever earmark any money anytime. And I'm gonna go back to my own personal experience and I'm gonna go back to one that I think the town probably had as well. Somewhere in the late 80s, early 90s, we hit a rough spot with state revenues I would get notices from funding agencies of rescissions for the fiscal year we were in right then. They would come in the middle of February and they would say, your, your budget is, your grant's been cut by half a percent and by 50%. This is no lie. It happened again in 2008. <clears throat> the moment you designate anything as an earmark, without flexibility, you then cut down your degrees of flexibility in terms of meeting those crises. We're not in one of those crises right now. I'm very concerned about the 
things we're seeing in the economy that could put us in that. But if the choice is I can continue to employ two or three people in state, in municipal government for the period from, you know, February 1st to the end of, of June and not have to cut their job midterm, then I want as much flexible money as possible. And I'd like to think that the state and the town has all learned how to do this better, but we all thought we had learned how to do it better back in 2008. And Andy lived through that on the finance committee. Bernie, I think you might've been there too. So I, I really feel, first of all, we have to live by our policies and look at our free cash when it's certified. And at that point, knowing what the amount is for this year's cannabis, do that. And I think we can set up a system not unlike what we ask people to do for the percent for art bylaw. And that is there are triggers by which at some point somebody can say, but this year we're just not able to do it because of X or because of Y. So I, I want some way in which we don't find a future town administration and a future town council with earmarked funds that don't allow us the flexibility one needs in hard times. And we've seen hard times. We've seen them twice that I can remember in just my period of time in Massachusetts with all kinds of state and federal money. So I, what I would like is for us to seriously consider that we do make a commitment to look at this with free cash in the moment we have the certification. But I would also like us to look at any discussion about earmarking that allows us some trigger to get out of an earmark in any one year where we might need it. I will even tell you with that, I still am very hesitant to ever earmark. I made the same case when the housing authority, when the housing, um, I'll think of it, John Hornick. Um, thank you. When they came to us and they wanted to take the uh, Airbnb taxes and they wanted it earmarked, and I just have to say, every time you earmark something, you have to cut the degrees of freedom that you have in the budget to meet hard times. That's now you've seen the fiscal conservative side of me. So what I'm going to do is matter of process for today. And I appreciate that comment as I probably would have offered it, but don't, now don't have to. Um, I'm going to recognize Bob, then I'm going to turn to public comment for all issues that are on the table. At that point, I think that we do need to draw this conclude to a conclusion because um, I want to get to um, the Centennial plant and I want to get to the North Common because those um, there are real um, important and substantial fiscal consequences if we don't get that back to the council in a timely fashion, as will be explained. Um, and I... Andy, before you move to Bob, can I just um, jump in quickly, please? I, yes, but please let us uh, move to, to through the process and get to public comment too. Yeah, I Go just ahead. wanna be in collaboration here since it's a shared meeting. And I think that what I've heard is there are members who would like to move forward with an action today. Um, at least Alicia has made herself clear. I have also made myself clear. If that's not going to be the case, if we need to have further discussion about this in terms of making the commitment, not in terms of the details that everybody's been, uh, and I think we need to maybe get into some of those details and get clarifying, uh, get cl clarification on some of those details, like the 5% that Sonia brought forward. Um, but if that's not going to be the case today, I want to make sure that we are committed to having a meeting in the very near future 
with the two committees to um, to bring those actions forward, or I am going to bring them forward in a motion today. Bob, yeah. um, yeah, I'll be brief. Um, I, I just I've been um, thinking about this for quite some time, and I do think that reparations is a priority for the town. It's certainly a personal priority. Um, and I think the, the cannabis tax is a creative solution. However, I do share Lynn's concerns about earmarks and um, you know, earmarks can really become problematic um, if, if not, if there isn't a sort of a safety valve on them. But what I would suggest or what I would propose consideration is putting reparations as a line, line item in the budget. And that way we can think about what we can afford every year uh, to put into reparations rather than kind of just saying, well, we'll do, there's this tax amount, we don't know what it is, but we'll, we'll take that. So that's just a consideration. I don't expect you know, anyone to, to decide on that now, but I think that might be a solution that gets around some of the issues with, with earmarking. Thanks. Okay. Um, I said uh, that I wanted to uh, get to public comment and then come back to the uh, committee. But Alicia, um, I'll leave it to you to decide whether I should go ahead and uh, see if there's a public comment before or after you speak. So you're next. Uh, if you don't mind, Andy, it's just very quick, quick. I just want to say that I think that it I think that it would be irresponsible to use the cannabis tax revenue, at least a percentage of it, for anything other than restorative justice and investing back into the black and brown community. Okay. Thank you. I was pausing because I didn't know. Um, so what I'm going to do is I um, ask for um, whether there's anybody who wishes to make public comment um, who's in the attendee list to please raise their hand. And uh, then um, I will recognize uh, members of the public to make comment. They can make comment on the issue that we've been discussing today or any other um, matter that um, should come before the Finance Committee, um, the ones that I've identified for today, or general, any, any issue is relevant. So I have one person who has asked to, uh, so far um, in this, uh, so if there's anybody else, please feel free to raise your hand, but please bring uh, Lauren into the room. Uh, Lauren Mills and uh, Mills uh, on mute here. Thank you. And why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us where you live and uh, please offer your comment. Yes. Hi. Um, good afternoon. We can hear you. Okay. Maybe she can't hear us. Oh, sorry. Hello. My, my screen just went black. But can you hear me? We can, I can hear you and I can see you. So I don't know what the problem is on the other, going the other direction, but. Okay. I, I'll try to make this quick. Um, I'm Lauren Mills, um, a six year resident of um, South Amherst, also um, a member of the uh, Board of Health. And um, as a person of color, um, I just wanted to um, lend my comments and thoughts and um, show appreciation for the work that the AHRA has done and also the town council um, and um, your discussion today. Um, I have a couple of questions um, just from the discussion as to if there's two uh, stabilization funds, how do you, know which one would, would the free cash would would go into for reparations like how would you um 
differentiate that if there's um, two, two sta stabilizations fund with the same name. Um, also, I, I really feel like the, the AHRA, if it does not continue as a, a, a committee, uh, there really needs to be a nonprofit organization um, with uh, Black stakeholders um, that um, have some degree of, um, you know, control over um, a fund funding for reparations. Um, also, I would suggest that maybe there should be a fundraising required to access the funds that the town will set aside for um, repar reparations, and I also call it reparative justice initiatives. And I did um, have a comment um, prepared, so I'll just shorten it, but I I'd like to read it. It says, um, this comment is in regard to the AHRA proposal to ask for a, a consistent stream of revenue for reparative justice initiatives that would enhance and benefit the black and brown communities of Amherst by setting aside a yearly amount of cannabis tax revenue for the purpose of building a sustainability stabilization fund that would be the town's responsibility, but would um, only be allocated for projects, items, and other, and, and that are approved by an appointed committee or group of African heritage stakeholders, um, aligning organizations and advocates. Uh, going beyond charity, a cannabis um, tax revenue stream for reparative justice could be used for mul in multiple ways to ensure that there are funds available for annual large-scale foundational programming and projects such as Black artists in residence, educational scholarships for African heritage residents, economic investment in startup businesses, and cultural enrichment activities. And um, since... I would just like to end my, my comments there and thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Is there any other public comment that uh, is to be offered today? Anybody wish, else wish to be recognized? Seeing none, then I need to see if there's anybody who's um, in the meeting um, who, and thank you, uh, who wishes to, uh, be recognized uh, at this point. And uh, I, I want to um, actually respond to the question. What we did last year was we knew that there was going to be a large amount of, a large enough amount of free cash at the end of the year that we could transfer the amount that was the estimated cannabis revenue. Um, this year, we're not quite as certain, so we've never faced the question of how we would make that division before. I think that that's part of what's on the table here. If there was going to be a motion today, and I've only partly written it out, it would be something like the Finance Committee recommends that the council request the Finance Department to prepare an order to transfer an amount of free cash equal to the estimated FY22 cannabis excise tax revenue for consideration after free cash is certified. And um, Sean? Did you say recommend to town staff? Yes. The, uh, I mean, I think that works if you want, but usually you'll you make recommendations to the um, council. But usually, yeah, the no, I think what the recommends that the council request. Okay, that, all right, that makes sense. That was the way that I had phrased it. So okay. you, the finance committee recommends that the council requests that the finance okay. department prepare an order to transfer um, free cash to the reparation stabilization fund in the amount of the estimated FY23, 22, wait, I'm getting, I thought some mixed up on this it would be the, I think you'd, it would be an amount equivalent to the FY22 cannabis taxes that are collected. Yes. Um, 
excise tax revenue uh, for consideration after free cash is certified. Um, that would seem approximately to be the, the motion that would close out the substantial portion of the discussion today. Uh, Andy, are you making a motion or are you just suggesting language? I'm, suggest, I'm suggesting language, um, leaving it to if somebody says, yep, I make that motion, then the motion's Thank made, you. seconded. We're, we'll then proceed to discuss the motion so we can close this for today. I see Alicia's hand is raised. Alicia? Um, thank you. I would like to make the motion, but I also just have a question regarding uh, the second portion of it, which was the the ongoing commitment for the cannabis tax revenue, and if that will come to another discussion at a later time, or if we are looking to also make a separate more motion on that part of it. Um, I think that today we probably can only go part way, not because of uh, anything other than um, I see Joe, Dave Zomack is in the attendee group and needs to be brought into the meeting. But um, also um, uh, Guilford is here and we have two other agenda items to solve in the minimum time. I think that we need to decide to take that up at our um, in a July meeting at our night whenever we schedule our next meeting, which is not yet scheduled. Okay, um, I think that sounds okay with me. Um, if there are other members of the finance committee who are also okay with putting that vote off, I would like to move the first motion forward, um, Andy. Okay, let me just ask if there's a second from a member of the finance committee who is a voting member. Second, Miller. Okay, so there's a motion that's made and seconded. Bill, do you need uh, help? Yeah, I, I, I have to have it read to me so I can get it, or you can email it to me. Do you have it or do you need it? No, I mean, I, I didn't type it while you were sort of talking talking through it, so I, I need it. Do you want to read it back to us as you have it? And we'll no, I, I, need, I don't have it, so I need you to read it to me again or email to me is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Um, but again, and as, uh, we can also do it both ways. Uh, I can email it to you too, but that the Finance Committee recommends that the Council request the Finance Committee to prepare an order that will tran to transfer the amount of free cash to stabilization in the estimated amount of FY. 23 cannabis excise tax revenue to be considered upon the certification of free cash for FY22. Can I offer two friendly amendments? Yes. I think you wanted to say actual FY22 uh, receipts. Okay, I will. Uh, it will have to make sure that uh, the maker and seconder are all in agreement of what we have, because we were really trying to word craft their motion. <laughs> and, I'm okay with that wording. Was, I was just wondering if Sean, did you have? Because you said two two friendly suggestions. Was there something else, or was that the only one? Uh, just um, I think changing estimated to actual and changing FY23 to FY. FY22. So that was both of okay. them. Thank and you, Michelle, Sean. That, Michelle, that's okay with you? That's fine. Yes. Yeah. Alan um, Cars has his hand up. Can I recognize him, Michelle? Of course. Yeah. Alan uh, Carr. So just uh, saying thank you for bringing this motion forward today and uh, encouraging uh, the voting members to, to go ahead and approve it. Um, you know, this 
well, one of the things, and and I believe me, I um, am have had to be a fiscal conservative too in my chairing a department at the University of Massachusetts in 2008 when uh, the world went through the Great Recession. And, uh, and we got our rescission scenarios, our budget cutting scenarios. And I really wish then that there might have been a fund set aside for a small department focused on uh, fighting anti-Black racism to be able to save it from some of the worst uh, cuts. This is what the fund provides. The fund provides that when you do go into these hard times, that some of the most vulnerable sectors of the town have a little cushion, have a little place to go to where some things can be done to, to save them, to preserve the climate, to help them as they face things in, in, a, in a more drastic way than perhaps some of the other, the, uh, uh, the, the, the less vulnerable and the less harmed sectors, the community. This is what makes the importance of having this little uh, pool of resources that are, that are dedicated. You haven't spent it. You're going to get the, the, the chance to, to vote when you do decide to spend it at a two-thirds threshold. That power is yours, okay? And that power is yours in the face of whatever the hard time is when the proposals come forward on actually spending. So, so you'll have the full discretion there. This is just about making the statement that this is a part of the ongoing value, values of this town, that we're reserving some of this pool of our, of our funds Okay, equivalent to the cannabis tax revenues, excise taxes collected, that we are dedicating them for restorative justice, reparative justice measures that help the most harmed members of our community. So, uh, um, so, so I again just encourage you to pass this forward and to have the conversation going forward about about future spending. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alex. Uh, Michelle, I want to um, conclude and get to a vote because we have those two other items and it's getting later than we expected. Um, yes, uh, may I make one more comment, please, just in wrapping this all up. And uh, I'd like to just be assured that we can schedule a meeting to complete the discussion on the designation of cannabis tax revenue for reparations. I am not comfortable with letting that go um, into the fall before we make that decision. Um, and as I said, I, I ask you from the bottom of my heart to understand that we have a lot of momentum here. We're working really hard and we're trying to work within this system here. And so if we could please uh, come together to, to settle a meeting time before the end of this meeting for that vote and recommendation to occur, um, I would very, very much appreciate it. Yeah. I don't. Um, I don't know that we will have time, but uh, we let's turn it. To, uh, also, say that uh, we can make a commitment right now that um, it is likely that the next meeting would be July if we don't schedule a July meeting, and I tend to doubt we'll have time to schedule a July meeting. That uh, it's our understanding that the intent is to put that on the agenda for the July meeting, uh, but um, I just don't know that we can do more that we can get to scheduling a meeting that always takes time to have everybody go through their calendars and that kind of thing and I don't want to do that if we can avoid it Lynn I want to keep moving but I do want to see if you have any I, I would like a clarification on the motion the motion is to prepare the purchase the um, fiscal order but it still has to be voted on either by the finance committee and recommended to the council or for the full council. Well, it certainly would have to be voted by the full council in the fall and whether it's referred to the back to the finance committee or just, or not, I think is a decision that as president you would make. Okay. I just want to, I wanted to clarify that it was to prepare that, but there still had to be a vote of somebody 
in this case, it would be the town council ultimately. There has to, there still has to be a vote because it's, it, the, it was to prepare an order. It was in. Okay. Uh, well, then, does the policy um, discussion have to come first with a recommendation from this committee, or can we bring it as we had planned to do on June 13th to the full town council without a recommendation? They can't vote on June 13th without the purchase order in front of them. I mean, the you can't order, you can't have the order. This is because the. Motion no, I, I'm is, talking about the policy um, to designate cannabis tax revenue for reparations. Does that need to have a recommendation from this committee, or can it be brought to the council um, on the 13th as we had planned? for a vote of the full council without a recommendation from this committee? No, I, I mean, I guess I can only say that um, my preference is that the committee have more time to conclude that discussion, but we do not have time today to have that discussion and we just need to move forward. We wanted to do something. I think that there was a real desire to take a concrete step and that's why I made the suggestion that we do what we did last year and at least keep pace with what we did last year, because I think uh, falling behind last year was um, just not an acceptable approach. Um, I really am concerned about our timing now. So I, is it, if there's other discussion that affects the motion. Otherwise, let's vote on the motion. I, I think Bill has his hand up, Andy. Yeah, Bill. Do you want me to just read to you exactly what I have for the motion so we can be clear about what we're voting on? Yes. So I have Walker, Walker moved and Miller seconded that the Finance Committee recommend that the Town Council prepare an order to transfer an amount of free cash to a stabilization fund in the amount of FY20, in the amount of the FY 2022 cannabis tax receipts. Is that correct? That was the staff. Okay. So it, it was the finance committee recommends that the council request the finance department to prepare an order. Got it. And I think the word actual might have been in there, but I, I'm not sure if I heard you say that, Bill. Yeah, I said it. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. Okay, um, so I'm gonna Andy, call for- Did you already vote? Did you already vote? The vote oh, one other friendly amendment, and again, this I defer to you and Lynn on this is, do you want the council to direct the finance office or the town manager? I think typically the council directs the town manager. Um, we need to know, have it be it to, town manager. Is it, if that's okay with the maker and seconder, change it to town manager? That is okay with me. Okay, hearing no objection, uh, let's proceed to a vote. And um, I think Kathy was the. Uh, uh, let me. I'll, I'll I'll start with myself, and I'll vote yes, and uh, move in alphabetical order. Alicia. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Bob? I support. Matt? Support. Bernie? Support. And Michelle? Yes. And Kathy? No, I don't support. So you're voting off. So it's four to zero with three members, uh, resident members in support. Four to one. Four to one. Four to one, I'm sorry. Four to one, got it. I'm sure that uh, Bill would have had it if I didn't, but thank you for his four to one. Uh, so with that said, uh, and I think that we understand what is intended for a July meeting when scheduled. <coughs> I want to <coughs> thank the uh, members of the um, Reparations Assembly for being present. Um, Michelle, I think, it, it would be helpful if you turn the meeting and sure. uh, then I want to um, let um, Sean direct us as to uh, the order of uh, uh, the, the two items that we need to 
Absolutely do. Uh, so adjourning the AHRA meeting at 4 p.m. <coughs> okay. Thank you, members. <laughs> okay, Sean, you wanna um, introduce one of the next two items. We have Dave and Gilford both here. Yeah, so um, I, I'm i thinking of maybe the North Common makes sense to go next because I think it's, I'm hoping it's a quicker item and then we can spend the rest of the time on Centennial. Um, Dave, do you, Gilford, are you okay with that if we go with North Common next? Yes. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll turn over to Dave to introduce this. There was a memo put um, in the packet. It was a little, put in a little later, but there was a memo in the packet uh, for people who need the background. Or Gilford, are you you sure I, I can wait? I know we had slated Centennial to go first, but. You know what, Dave, why don't, why, why don't we go with Centennial first, actually, just in case, because um, because Centennial is the one that has the real time sensitive um, piece mm -hmm. to it. Um, yeah, so that was the plan. And I okay. don't, you know, Guilford was here for that. So, OK, um, Guilford, do you want me to introduce this topic or do you want to go ahead? You can go ahead, Sean. OK, um, so just building off of last night, um, the, the Centennial project has escalated in its cost. Um, a couple times we've had different cost estimates provided by this is Weston and Sampson as our engineer. Guilford, is that correct? No, it's Tate and Howard. Tate and Howard for this one. Okay. Um, so they've updated our cost estimates a few different times. It's gotten more expensive each time. Um, the latest and, and hopefully the final cost estimate is for a little less than $18 million. Um, Fortunately, we were accepted into the drinking uh, drinking water state revolving fund program, which provides um, a 19.8% loan forgiveness, and it provides financing at a rate of 1.5%, um, which is much better than market rates uh, these days. Um, the slight downside is that they're only doing that for $14 million of the project because at the time we submitted, that was the cost estimate. Um, so we will still have to borrow the other $4 million um, the, the way we normally do and pay market rates for that other 4 million, unless we we have asked uh, the drinking water state revolving fund if there's any way they could increase the amount that we're in for because the cost estimates went up. They might be able to go another million. I think there's a cap on what they can do. I think that cap's around 15 million. 15. Um, I don't think we can count on that. So, um, but we, we have asked. Um, so, so what we have asked the council to do is to rescind the previous debt authorization for 11 million for Centennial and to authorize the 18 million and authorize us to um, essentially accept uh, the entry into this program, which will, which will provide these terms. Um, and the program needs the full amount of the project authorized in order, by June 30th in order for us to proceed. Um, I also described last night that we potentially have another funding source in the forward bill, but that's a long ways off um, and we can't count on that either. Um, but if if there's strong advocacy and that does come to fruition, um, this program combined with the money in the forward bill, which was 3.5 million, would get us back down to actually below our original cost estimates for this project um, in terms of the, the impact on the rates and, and the annual debt payment. Um, so today, I, if um, we're happy to answer any questions, I've modeled, I'd say these are rough models of the impact on the rates uh, under different scenarios, but I can share those with you if you wanna see them. Um, and yeah, and then we ask that you uh, make the recommendation today if possible. Okay, and uh, just so now, do you have prepared orders or do you? <laughs> yeah, in the memo, there's uh, two orders. There's the, um, there's the order to rescind and the order to authorize the new, the new total amount. Okay. Sorry, I'm having something in my throat. <clears> throat> um, let's have the orders when we get ready, but uh, let's have discussion first. Bob? Yeah, Sean, I just, uh, can you just clarify what the difference in the total cost to the town is uh, with the, the increase, but with being part of the, um, you know, getting a lower rate and getting some of it forgiven. What's the, how, where do we stand in terms of what we sort of already thought of as the total cost of this project? Yeah, that's a good question. So I just had to do it on the calculator real quick. Um, so the original project that we authorized um, was around 11 million. Um, this project, 
uh, this new, if we go forward with this new amount, or sorry, we have to go for the new amount, but with the with the uh, drinking water state revolving fund program, they provide the 19.8% forgiveness on $14 million. So if you subtract, multiply those numbers together, subtract it from the 18 million, it brings our new cost in around 15.2. Um, so we'd be looking at around 15.2 million versus, um, versus uh, the 11 million that we originally what, planned what on. Did, what, did we, what did we assume the interest rate was in the original? So in the original, no, that's a good question. In the original, we assumed an interest rate in the high twos um, at the time. So having the interest rate on the 14 million at 1.5 helps offset the, the impact of the higher uh, total cost. So the impact on rates, um, it, it does impact rates by authorizing the higher amount, but it's not as much as it otherwise would because of that favorable rate. Okay, thanks. Other, other questions? <clears throat> um, Kathy. John, did we also get a separate month amount that was an absolute allocation or is it just the loan? Why so so the, um, the, the 19.8 percent loan forgiveness is like the sort of almost like a grant uh, portion of this. So once the project is done, they um, we, we had conversations with them recently, they take that portion off the top and then finance the rest. Okay. So so that comes out to a little over two million dollars that 19.8 um, percent of the, the 14 million that was approved. Okay, at, at one point I thought there was a two or three million in addition to the loan, but there, it, this was part of so, it. No, yeah, so that was the forward act um, that if the forward bill, ah. the, that included a separate three and a half million dollar mass works grant for this specific project. Um, so that's the bill that's stuck. That's, that's not the bill that's yes. yeah, po politics has sort of uh, brought it to a halt. Yeah. Okay. And, and our representatives understand that along with Pittsfield and a bunch of other towns where we would Pretty like. Much, yeah, we, every community, I think, had something in that bill that would, would benefit them, so. Okay. And, and can I just, building on what Bob, if, if there's a chance we would still get that, does that just, would that just pre, would we be able to prepay down some of the debt we're about to incur to do this, or? Yeah, I mean, the timing could be problematic. Um, so that's why I think we want to push to know about that as soon as possible. Um, I will, you know, I will ask the question of the state revolving fund. A lot of times when you borrow money, you can't um, sort of prepay or refinance until a certain period of time. Um, they, you know, so that they get their guaranteed interest over a certain number of years. Um, with the state revolving fund, we will have to check to see if there's the ability for us to maybe pay off some of that loan and. Um, or restructure it to get the rates down on an annual basis. Because really what we want to do is borrow the least amount of money as possible right. um, to get the annual payments down. Yeah, so I wasn't saying in any way that I was not for this. I was just looking for that. Could we actually, yeah. um, you answered my question. Thank you. Go for it. Um, you, can, you can prepay and pay down your principal if you have money come forward. Um, remember this program has so much money and as you spend the money and as people pay it back, that allows them to then give more loans to other people. So there's no restriction on early payments or paying down loan debt. Good. Anything else? Because otherwise then the first um, motion we would need is a motion to recommend to the town council uh, order FY2213 uh, in order rescinding authorization for unissued bonds. Um, so moved. Is your second? Shane seconds. Okay, uh, any further discussion on the on that motion? Seeing no request for recognition for speaker. Um, then Alicia, in the vote? Yes. Uh, Lynn? Yes. Bob? I support. Matt? Support. Bernie? Support. Uh, Michelle? Yeah. 
Kathy? Yes. And I'm a yes. So it's unanimous with uh, support of three resident members. And uh, the second order that we have, um, you want to put it on, is it available to put on the screen too? Because I know you had, I think there were two orders. So the motion this time would be uh, to recommend to the town council approval of appropriation and borrowing authorization order FY 2209A in order approving and authorizing um, borrowing <coughs> capital fund projects bond authorization. So uh, moved. Second. Shane seconds. Yeah, there's been a motion, then second. Any uh, further discussion on the motion? Seeing no request for discussion, uh, I will turn to the vote and start this time with Lynn. Yes. And Bob? I support. Matt? Matt? He's still here. Uh, he's still here, but he's muted. Um, okay. Sorry, I, I support Andy. I apologize. Okay, no problem. Bernie? Support. Michelle? Yeah. Kathy? Yes. I'm a yes. And uh, then uh, Alicia? Yes. Okay, so again, it's uh, unanimous with three members. President, thank members you very much. Support. So um, I think that takes care of that. Um, so uh, do you want to introduce uh, Dave or just let Dave take over? Dave, go ahead. Thanks for the introduction, Sean. Um, <laughs> Dave Zomack, our assistant town manager, everybody. Anyway, thank you all. I know it's been a long meeting for you and um, lots of important topics, so I'll try to be brief. Um, what uh, Sean and Sonia and I and others um, have been working on, of course, is the North Common Project. You, you, you've heard a lot about it through the years. I guess I would start out with the great news that we just received a, a large grant from through the Commonwealth uh, but from the land, the Federal Land and Water Conservation Fund, the grant is for $827,000 and change. Um, and this is, um, you know, to support the renovation, the restoration of the North Common. Um, you may recall, you do recall, I'm sure, that um, the council voted on a concept plan some months ago. Uh, really, uh, that plan, that is the plan we are moving forward with. Um, and at the time, uh, when we put together the budget, um, we were talking about some other funds supporting that, that project, including transportation funds uh, from the, the, the transportation fund, which is, um, is uh, not doing incredibly well right now. So the good news here is that this federal money can be used to match the already appropriated CPA money. So we will not need any transportation fund money to do this project. Um, and I think um, I apologize that we got you this memo um, so um, uh, with such short time for review before this meeting, but I think we're all trying to um, get as much done during June as possible. And our goal was to present this to the council uh, at their meeting on Monday night, the 13th. The request before you includes an outline of the, of the motion and what actions we, we, we are looking for the, the council to take hopefully with your recommendation. It includes a project budget of 1.813214. Uh, it includes a uh, schedule. The goal of this project would be to have this out to bid in the fall of this year and be under construction in May or June of 2023. It would be at least a four month construction, maybe five to six months. We really don't know at this point. Um, and then, of course, the memo also includes um, um, uh, the concept plan that the council approved some months ago. And let me just quickly go over what the order does. So the order um, essentially appropriates the, the sum that I just mentioned, 
um, 1.813214. That's the overall project budget. And keep in mind that we do have to match every dollar one for one, the 827,000 needs to be matched by CPA dollars. Um, we would be using um, the full $986,148 from CPA. Um, it authorizes the town manager to accept these grant funds and any other grant funds that we might uh, pull into this project. And it authorizes the treasurer to issue a grant anticipation note. And I'll leave this to Sonia or Sean, but my understanding is we, we don't go out uh, to bond this project. This is really an internal process. Uh, this is a reimbursement grant. So we expend the money to contractor X and then um, we get reimbursed by the state along the way. And then the final piece of this is that the grant does require us to transfer the care, custody, and control of that small section of the common, which is outlined in the memo, to the Recreation Commission. And keep in mind, um, the common is part of the public way. So uh, this is a rather unique process. Uh, we have vetted this. Um, I know Guilford has been around the table as well as uh, uh, the town manager, and we vetted this with um, town council. Um, as well as the state uh, overseeing this grant program. And this is commonly how they do it. A portion of the, of the common would essentially become what's called Article 97 land. This is land dedicated to passive recreation, if you will, uh, that'll include areas for picnicking, areas, a plaza for um, you know, the various uh, Memorial Day and Veterans Day and other ceremonies that we have out in front of town hall. And then it would include seating areas and other areas for uh, eating and, and socializing, as was outlined in the North Cam Common uh, presentations that many of you saw months ago. So let me stop there. That's what is um, on the table. Very excited to be bringing this amount of money and this large grant to the project and um, not tapping into the, to the uh, depleted uh, transportation fund. So thank you. I'll stop there. And if Sonia or Sean wanted to add anything, by all means, please do. Yeah, I'll just add that the order for this one was uh, a draft order was put in the packet. Um, we have had a couple small revisions since that draft was put in, um, but there, I wouldn't say there anything uh, material. So, um, so there is a draft order to consider. Uh, and, and this is really sort of similar to what you know we just did with Centennial and what we've done in the past with some other projects where we got a grant, we have to authorize the full amount of the of the project in order to receive the grant. Um, it's not changing the amount of town funds that are going towards the project. In fact, it's actually reducing the amount of town funds that are going towards the project. Okay. Um, Dave, my recollection is that there, <clears throat> there is precedent for transferring uh, to the equivalent of the Recreation Commission, because I think I can remember previous transfers to uh, the LSSC commission for similar purposes. Yes, that we have done that. Um, and, and it's a requirement of it's it's a requirement of the state both for CPA as well as the land and conservation and land and water conservation fund grant. Um, uh, Cherry Hill Golf Course has this uh, requirement, uh, Mill River Recreation Area. Um, War Memorial Pool and Grove Park, all of those have this requirement and we did identify a project area. Essentially, the state and federal government want to hold cities and towns accountable to say, we're giving you a, a large sum of money and we want you to dedicate these to passive recreation, if you will. In this case, it is, they do, uh, Land and Water Conservation does fund a number of commons projects throughout Massachusetts. And um, this is kind of unique in that it is the public way. Hey, Kathy, see you. Um, thank you. Thanks for the presentation, Dave. Um, I have two questions. Um, uh, one, let, let me start with what my, was my second. My second question is on this uh, transfer to the recreation. Does that mean that in perpetuity, 
this is now grass and green. Um, and would it restrict if we needed to shrink it a bit for parking? Say the back end parking didn't work well. We we the plan was to add some spaces along Main Street right by the bus stop. Uh, Guilford had one point shown a drawing that took a little bit of the edge of the common off. So would we, once we take this money, does that total piece of land have to stay? Um, when you say, what, what's, what's the level of restriction on it? That's question one. And the second one's a little bit easier, I think. Um, when I looked at the timeline, um, it, it looks like we will still be in construction when UMass and Amherst College come back into session. So um, I'm just thinking about the disruption of downtown and probably there isn't any way you can start it when they go home and have it finished before they come back. So that was just a question on the timeline on that. I believe the library, Sean, Sean will know this. When would the library construction start to happen. I'm, I'm just thinking of what does downtown look like? You know, when, when we're, we're tearing off half of the library and trying to move stuff up and we're tearing up the North Common um, toward, and there may be nothing we can do about that timeline, but but it will, it will not make things easy for people to come down and go out to eat or I personally will try to avoid downtown when this is going on. I, I, I know some routes. It's like Route Nine right now. I know some routes. So it, it. So that's my second question. Yeah. Well, let me take the second one first, if I could, Kathy. Through, um, and and that is, yeah. The, the answer is there's no easy way to do this. You know, weather is a big factor. Um, supply chain is a big factor. We essentially have, um, we have from July first of this year to about June 1st of 2024 to get this done. So it's a it's a pretty small window given the building um, season in, in Massachusetts, in New England. Um, and yeah, there's gonna be some short-term pain for what amounts to a 50 to 100 year project. So, um, but having said that, we're really talking about the, the area um, from the sidewalk um, at Spring Street. So essentially, you know, um, the Spring Street parking lot will be open during this construction. Um, um, and, and we will, uh, um, working with Guilford, my understanding is that the contractor will likely work uh, from south to north. So yes, it will be fenced. Um, and again, it'll be kind of a short term uh, period of, of, you know, aesthetically unpleasing area, but I, I think they can work fairly quickly. The, the most of this project is earthwork, drainage, um, 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 uh, then sidewalk work, lighting, those kinds of things. So there's, there's not much vertical construction at all. There's some retaining walls to deal with the water on the site um, and, and the erosion that we now see out there but it, it can go fairly quickly, but yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna make summer, um, you know, a, a little aesthetically unpleasing, but I think if, if all other um, parking is, is retained in town, it should be a short-term um, nuisance for people and, and hopefully it'll be, be that. Um, the second, the first question is, is a little um, more difficult, but I think the short answer, Kathy, is Yes, it does prohibit us from changing the plan. So, um, and, and frankly, we knew that all along because if we use CPA dollars to do this project, which was the plan all along, that's the only thing we have to do this project, CPA dollars and now this grant, um, the CPA dollars come with an assumption that you will not change this project area into something else. Now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, if we need X, Y, or Z, and future leaders of the town decide that, there may be a way to change that. But in the near term, the, the idea would be to keep it as a park-like setting, a common-like setting uh, for people to enjoy and, and uh, for us to have celebrations and, and whatnot, from the Merry Maple to Veterans Day, Memorial Day, Juneteenth, and the list goes on and on. So. Um, that's that's the goal of the project. And just yep. adding adding to what Dave said, to one of your questions, Kathy, the library uh, Jones Library construction 
is the latest timeline is October 2023 is when that would start. Okay, the one finishes and the other starts. Um, so just Dave, on the CPA one, the original CPA had a picture with a parking lot on it. So that picture got changed after they voted out it. You know, we I know I know the sequence of it, but it had parking on the green and that was removed when it went to the council. So they did approve one set of graphics um, and we did a different diagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, right, but yeah, I mean, the council vote supersedes it, it. It it is ultimately the council did not, the council approved a plan with no parking on the common, not the plan with parking on the common. So I, I, I I don't go back to the CPA vote. If, if I go back to the council vote that included CPA dollars for the project, which would then require that this be green space and, and walkways and seating and lighting and all of those. Thank you. Shell. Yeah, I apologize. I had to switch over to my phone, so I, I may have missed this, but were there some visuals that were um, presented for this project, and is this the project that was voted by the last council and is now being represented at this time? So, so the short answer there is is um, there are many visuals. I'm sure that Sean and Sonia can maybe send the FinCom a link to the visuals. There are there is a plan developed by DPW Paul Bethier at DPW, and um, there are have been dozens of public meetings and public presentations on the project, including a um, illustrations done by Weston and Samson on what, again, these are, these are illustrative, they're, they're not exact um, representations of what will be built, but there are people enjoying the new uh, re rehabilitated North Common at ceremonies and, and um, um, uh, different events um, that are illustrated in the Weston and Samson uh, images. And then I think your second part of it, Michelle, was- Page five of your memo also has a map. Uh, yeah, please, it, Dave, it has a map, but I know there are some wonderful illustrations of people using the new renovated common as we envision it. Um, we are not bringing the project back. The design is not coming back to the council, Michelle. We are simply looking for the authorization to move forward using the grant funds that we've just been uh, awarded. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to place this in my, you know, I we received something from Paul just the other day and I had inquired about getting more information because it sounded like it was something that had been decided by the previous council. Um, and I don't remember seeing more information. And then of course I had to switch off over into my phone. So I, I want to be able to support this. I just don't feel like I have all of the information and that's no fault of anyone but i just that's where i'm at indy i can't raise my hand but i would like to speak yes please uh, michelle <laughs> this actually yes. goes to back to the previous select board who right. booted it to the town council so it's been out there for now going on five or six years um, I, I would like to say that I totally support this. I want to compliment uh, our staff uh, for both this grant and the loan. These are big achievements for our town. Uh, and this is particularly allowing us to move forward and perhaps not even use all of our CPA money. Um, so I'm prepared to make a motion at any point. Me too. Okay. Do you want to frame the motion or do you want me to frame the motion? I'll be glad to frame it. Okay. I move, I move that we recommend to the town council appropriation transfer and dedication order FY 22-05 F an order authorizing and appropriating funds for the capital improvement of the North common. Shane seconds. Yeah, there's a motion been made and seconded. Uh, Michelle, your hand is still up, but I, okay. Uh, any further 
so. any, any further discussion questions? If not, my only big question is, Sean, we don't have to rescind anything on this, right? Uh, I don't think so. You're already. Um... We're accepting additional money and we're. Yeah, no... The, no, it's not rescinding, but just the, the CPA funds, Sony, is it consolidating it into? It's just repurposing old capital. So it's okay. repurposing all the articles okay. that they voted. Right. Yeah, this order takes care of everything. Okay, thank you. That was all. And I again, needed. just to clarify again, this order may change slightly um, by the time you see it again at the council level, just because it's we've been going back and forth with the state on exactly what has to be in it. I'm fine with that. Could I, before you vote, could I just make one clarifying um, note in the memo in, in under request E? It says to transfer the care, custody, and control of a portion of the town common. I believe that should say from the town council. We'll clarify this, but it's from the town council to the recreation commission because the town common is in the public way, which is the purview of the of the town council. So we will clarify that before this comes on Monday night. But I'm quite sure that should have read town council, and I'll I'll work on that with with um, our town attorney Lynn before Monday night. Thank you. Any further just discussion questions seeing none then uh, i'll proceed to a vote and uh start with bob hegner bob i support matt support bernie support uh michelle yeah uh kathy yes i'm a yes uh alicia Yes. And um, I'm trying to think where I started, Lynn. Yes. I think did we start with Bob? I believe so. I think we have everybody, and it's a unanimous vote with support of all three members of the committee. Um, we've gone over our um, estimated time for the day, which is unfortunate, but. Um, those things do happen. And um, so I'm trying to take a quick look at the agenda myself um, that I should have available uh, for, to, to look at quickly. Um, I'm and, gonna sign off, Andy. Thank you very uh, much. To thank the you very much, Dave. Everybody. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So uh, number seven was uh, financial orders to implement committee recommendations, but I think that we have all of the financial orders that were available uh, for consideration. Uh, future meeting planning, what I'm proposing is that uh, one of us, Sean, Athena, or I will send out a poll um, with some suggested dates for July. We will try for one July meeting um, that uh, at this point, we do not um, anticipate the need for another June meeting. We have worked hard as a um, committee so that uh, we uh, really deserve the time off. And I think we should take it uh, for ourselves other than we have a bunch of reports to complete. And uh, those need continued uh, continued work. So I will um, do that. It's also understood and we've talked about further that we will return to further discussion of the reparations issues. There, there was one reparation issue that's remaining. Will be an item for the July uh, uh, meeting. Um, I will try and schedule the July meeting now because I want to uh, consult with staff about what they anticipate is going to be available and what are needs for summer meetings. Uh, and uh, I think that that pretty much takes care of the planning part. Uh, the other thing that I'll just mention is, is that um, I want to um, thank those of you who sent in comments on what was labeled as draft one. I had been working this morning on taking those comments and incorporating it into the beginning of a draft two. And then I'm gonna uh, be um, adding the various sections that have been 
that I've received from those of you who send me sections for, and I think I have most of them for the rest of the uh, the second part of the the report. Uh, if you didn't, um, please get me your um, lang what what you're recommending. If you have questions or concerns about how to proceed or having problems contact me individually. I don't want to do that in a public meeting, uh, um, but I do need to get this report completed so I can get it to the council. Um, I will try and get a uh, draft two out as quickly as I can. Even if it's incomplete, I will get it so that we continue to just get um, you know, the chance to review it and can narrow it on the amounts that remain to be reviewed as I proceed. I have no other unanticipated, no unanticipated business. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has anything that they would like to raise. So I'll pause for a moment, and make sure that John and Sonia have nothing else to raise. And I think I, the answer is no. So um, seeing nobody has raised hands for other um, in the anticipated business. I will declare the meeting adjourned and thank you. And I appreciate that everybody was able to stay and it took longer, but we've accomplished a lot and uh, enjoy the rest of the month and uh, the holiday that will follow shortly thereafter. And we'll find a July date. Um, and I will be contacting you about drafts as we go along. So thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.